So I'm tuning in right now to talk to you all about two things, intimacy and my story, which right now are the same for me. Sharing my story is the most intimate thing I feel like I can do. And yeah, I've been going through a breakup this past month and it's been really painful and has brought to my attention how deeply I crave intimacy in every area of my life and how in this relationship and how in so many romantic relationships specifically throughout my life, I've, I've used that space to fulfill all my needs for intimacy and um, closeness and just being my full self in romantic partnerships, but then not in other areas of life. And it's time for that pattern to end. And yeah, just tuning into that and really noticing that for myself. Uh, I turned 24 about two weeks ago and um, there's just a lot of deaths happening in my world right now. A lot of releasing of not only this relationship, but of just the way I've been moving through the world and the parts of my life that, ha that are not in alignment. The parts of my life where I have this knowing of what's true, I have this knowing of what doesn't feel right, and yet in my day-to-day, -day, things don't match that knowing that I have inside. And so I am I'm speaking this out to the world to call myself into that place of alignment, to follow that thread, to lean into that path that I'm weaving for myself and yeah to continue following that and to really continue my process of coming out of hiding about what I believe and who I am and not just coming out of hiding in a way where it's the overall theme of my life but rather coming out of hiding in the day-to-day -day moments when something feels off um changing that situation I'm in or opening up my throat chakra and saying this feels off or um, making physical changes in my life and in my world to bring my truth more into this life right now. And um, so that's, that's, that's what I'm feeling into when it comes to death and my story and how I'm going to share it right now. So um, when I was 18, right after high school, I, I took a gap year and I went to Peru and Bolivia and I first did a trekking program there and we trekked through the Andes and the Amazon and stayed with different host families. We got to stay in Nacion Queros in Peru, which is a sovereign nation in Peru of indigenous people and mainly Quechua speaking and we got to have the opportunity to stay with these families and just so much wisdom came from that time that three months of trekking and learning from my peers my instructors the land the indigenous people learning about my own history as an ancestor of colonizers learning about things i didn't know that had happened in California on the land I was raised on and learning about my privilege, stepping into my role as a privileged person in this current paradigm. Yeah, so a ton of learning and a ton of just um, receiving wisdom and listening, really being humbled, learning how to listen to the rhythms of the earth and beginning to tap into the rhythms of my own body. And so after that experience, I came back to the U.S. And then I went back to Peru again and was on my own this time. I wasn't part of a program and I did a yoga teacher training program in Cusco. And then I went and volunteered at this house for children and also lived in the city for a little bit at this place called The Healing House and had a lot of like little excursions throughout that time on my own. Um, and that took my, the seeds that were planted during that first trip in Bolivia and Peru to another level of self-discovery and depth. And I 
uh, I sat with my first plant medicine as well in Peru right before leaving San Pedro, a cactus, and it was a really sweet and powerful and gentle experience. I played in the mud for hours and just felt so mm, playful and um, yeah, it was really gentle. And I also at one point felt this like, this sense of like something's like knocking at my mind. Like there's some knocking, like what is this knocking? But it didn't, it, I didn't, I didn't dive into it then. I have since and um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave that there for now. Maybe I'll get back to the knocking. But so then I came back and I had previously in high school, I planned on going to American University in Washington, DC. And in high school, I was really into to politics. I was the, the vice captain of the speech and debate team and the vice president of youth and government, this governmental program in California. And I was just really passionate about like, intending to solve the world's problems through politics. And um, I, I was super into using my voice. I've always used my voice to speak and to um, push for what I want and to debate and just be heard and sometimes to manipulate. And um, this, getting a little tangential with the story itself, but this is all relevant. And so after, um, Coming back from Peru, I realized that I didn't want to go to American University anymore. It just felt really not in line. Um, and that in itself was a huge sort of falling out with my parents of how could you, like, like you, my parents saying, like, you lied to us. Like, we invested in this experience abroad and now you don't want to go to this college. What? And I initially thought I didn't want to go to college at all. Um, I had met this woman... Naomi in Peru and something that she said really stuck with me is that like college is where you go to lose your soul and I was like attached to that idea but my parents were basically saying recognize the privilege you have we're gonna fund this experience like please go to college so I was like okay I hear you so I found the least college -y school I could find Naropa University in Boulder Colorado um, it's a Buddhist inspired school they practice contemplative education and I went there for a year and it was a super powerful experience. So deep and heart opening and painful at times. And I, I one of my best friends in the world, Nicole, um, is, yeah, she still goes there and we met there. And I have lots of people that I met during that year who I'm still in touch with. Um, and I got really into working with mushrooms specifically and other psychedelics and in a way that at times was intentional but in times was not and um was abusive to the medicine and also to my own psyche and I felt extremely ungrounded and just didn't have a framework for kind of bridging the worlds that I had um been a part of in high school and then in this college experience, which was just completely on the other end, and then coming back to California with my family and sort of like putting on a mask and being like, okay, like this is who I am. So yeah, um, super ungrounding. And that summer when I came back home after Naropa, I experienced some deep, deep depression and ended up going on depression meds briefly. And then shortly after got off of them because they didn't help at all and made it quite worse, in fact. Um, but I also decided that I didn't want to go back to Naropa. Um, and so I, I decided to study abroad again with the intention of taking those credits and applying them to a university in the future. I didn't know where yet, but, um, and so I, I, I wanted to go back to South America. So I went to Ecuador and I studied abroad there with the program SIT and lots of, lots of, lots of things in that experience, but I was able to work with the midwife, that's one of the highlights, um, and assist with three births, which was super powerful. And I had also applied that summer to um, a few different colleges, and I got accepted to Pitzer College in Claremont, which is about 40 minutes from where I grew up in Glendale. And so I decided to go there, and it was perfect, I could transfer my credits and everything, yeah, it was great. And I actually wanted to be closer to home, 
home being Southern California um, for a variety of reasons. I felt like while I was abroad in Peru and Bolivia and Ecuador, I felt often closer to my host families than I did to my family, my birth family from home. And um, this familial culture that I had encountered in parts of South America really spoke to me and I wanted to cultivate that with my own family in a way and also my younger sister was in high school at the time and when I was in high school she and I were super close and having her there was really important so I wanted to be in her life so I decided I'm going to go to school close by I won't live at home but I can come back and still be part of home so I went to Pitzer and wow Pitzer I was there for um four semesters so two years and that is just um so many things I could say about it I really stepped into my queerness identifying as queer I identify as pansexual my sexuality is fluid um and I feel like I really stepped into that part of myself at Pitzer and also it did feel in a way like it combined being there combined parts of myself with the aspect of me that is really into social justice and um, environmental justice, food justice, and fighting for a planet that looks different, a planet where we're not divided based on our race, where we're not divided based on our socioeconomic status or our gender or the way we love and who we love and how we love. And that fire was combined with the more flowy aspects of me that are very... Um, into the mystery and um, like to just kind of be in that place of unknowing and like to be outside and just frolic in the trees and play in the forest. And so at that moment in time, it did feel like a good choice to be there. And then I graduated early, a semester early and went to North Carolina to this folk school, um, a folk school being um, a place where they offer classes in blacksmithing and mandolin and printmaking and pottery and woodworking and wood turning and all these different crafts. Um, and so I gardened there in exchange for classes for uh, like a few months. Um, and I drove cross country to get there. Oh, but before I went there, I actually drove up to Oregon and went to visit this woman named Beth Root who lives on lesbian women's land. There was this movement back in the 60s or 70s, I'm not sure the date, but the lesbian separatist movement and a lot of um, lesbians created homesteads that were off the grid and completely self-sustaining. And so she is now 79, I believe. Yeah, 79, just had her birthday, I think, back in November, October. And um, so I stayed with her and I lived in her yurt. She has a house, a round house, built by a bunch of women years ago and um, I stayed in her yurt and um, yeah just kind of helped out where I could and um, really like did some internal diving some deep diving into my psyche and um, uh, my art my writing my guitar and then I drove from there to North Carolina in the winter and um, it was a journey and such the whole physical journey of going to North Carolina and then going back later in April was just wow like so so much like oh my god <laughs> everything in my external world mirrored the internal world and I felt um just really yeah like like learning how to love myself more deeply and to physically care for myself too and you know protect myself against the elements, but also like lean into the unknown. And yeah, uh, and just so many things that came up like patterning around love and abandonment and um, a lot of releasing there of that abandonment wound. And so then I came back to my home in Southern California, where I am currently still residing, my family's house, and um, uh, my friends from Pitzer, we were all graduating, technically the ceremony was in May, and so I basically went there every weekend, um, or more than a weekend, and stayed with my friends at the house I had lived at 
the semester prior, and then I'd be at my family's house every week, and so I was kind of going back and forth. Um, I wasn't working actively, just kind of doing my creative things and brewing things in my cauldron. And the second weekend I was back, I just connected with this person who I'd been friends with for a while, and we fell in love really quickly and had been dating for this past year and that's the relationship that just ended recently and so I'm sharing this story because it just feels it feels very relevant and I want all of me to be seen and known and witnessed and as I said not only in this overarching way of this is who I am but I am making the commitment to myself to show up in each moment of my life as the Anna that I know I am and um I am physically sick of lying in the moment to moment, like physically sick of like smiling when I don't want to smile or just ugh, so many, I mean, so many things that I, I want to be able to go outside and hug a tree and not be asked if I'm okay. Or I want to be able to lay face down in the earth and cry and not have people be afraid of me or just be able to let my voice flow out into the world, whether it's through song or through a scream, because that's the emotions that I need to release and not have, not have people think there's something wrong with me. And I don't want this just for me. I want this for everyone. I want this, this is my vision. This is like the vision for the world, a world where, where we are raised knowing that we are wise intuitive people of this earth and we can listen to the soil we can listen to the way that nature moves and remember that we are part of nature and that we don't have to ever smile when our gut is telling us to scream and that it is safe there this there's this underlying like well of safety inside of each of us that is reflected in our families, our friends, and in the collective, that we know whatever we are feeling and doing and saying, we are held and supported because we are, we already are. And so there's, my vision is that we remember this and that we act upon it and that we open up our hearts and open up our circles in a real way where we can lean into our darkness and share our darkness without fear that someone will um, interrupt our process or judge or try to fix, try to fix the darkness. No, that we can just share and have it be witnessed. And um, yeah, I don't know exactly how this vision will come to be, but I know it starts in my own life with being candid about my story and day to day increasing intimacy with everything I do, with everything I touch, with the way I walk through the world, the way I physically walk on the ground, the way I play instruments, the way I hold my phone, the way I eat, having that sense of intimacy with my food, the way I brush my hair, and I am so grateful to be in this process of death, of this relationship, as, as excruciatingly painful as it has been and maybe still, who knows, um, because it's reminding me what I really crave is not just intimacy with one person, as beautiful as that is, and as that is something I do want in my life, I also crave intimacy in every single breath, in every single step I take, in every single note I sing and speak. And it's my vision that we can all have the intimacy that we crave in every moment. So thank you for listening, for witnessing my story, and please comment, share, subscribe, share anything you like about what intimacy means to you and your own story that you want to bring forward. Hmm. Blessings on your journey during this time. Mwah.